story time. And last week I ended off where the spinning wheel arrived, red letter day. Well, it's a year later and I'm going to start there. But before I start, I'm sure some of you have spinning wheels out there. So some of you really know this. Spinning wheels go both ways. So when you go and you start, you know, working the pedals and making it go, it, it can go counterclockwise, it can go, oh, it can go clockwise, it can go counterclockwise. And it can do it so fast that you just tangle up your, your yarn or you're so busy trying to get your yarn pulled in and finally you just pull it out and you're, you're not connected. And it's not as easy as you think. You watch spinners and it looks so easy and they're so relaxed and it's just going fine. But when you go to learn it, it isn't always as it seems. And so I got this spinning wheel, really good one. It was top of the line. It was expensive. And here I was, was I even going to be able to use it? Well, one thing that helps, helps for all sorts of things, practice in your mind. So I'd be going to bed and I'd be thinking, spinning, I'd be practicing. And you know what? That helps. It really does. And soon I was spinning. And then I had to learn how to ply, where you put the two yarns together. Well, you spin your wheel one way, but to get it to ply, you have to go the other way. And when I started learning that, again, I got the wheel sometimes going both ways and all the tangles. And, but I finally, I love to ply. And I love to see maybe a creamy, uh, natural color yarn going next to some dyed yarn or the black yarn uh, with a, uh, a dyed yarn. So it was really a fun thing to do. And it was, once you learn it, it's just a, a very calming thing to do. But anyway, I've had my wheel now a year and my wool wheel has been spinning and humming for one year this month when I wrote this. It has spun up eight sheep which has made 15 caps, you know, the stocking caps, uh, five vests, and one 54-inch diameter rug that is still alive today. It's in Craig's bedroom. The rug is Abe, basically from his black wool, although it has been trimmed in Bell's white and dyed plum and indigo wool. The results were worth all the hours spent washing, picking, and spinning. Only eight sheep have been spun this year, but 12 fleeces have been washed, a chore in itself. My head still spins with newly, new, <laughs> woolly, nice projects for the coming year. Uh, when you wash the wool, it seems... I've got competition here. When you wash the wool, it seems funny. You're gonna wash it in extremely hot water. And I use Dawn soap, and I would wash it, and that first washing was just horridly dirty. And then I rewashed it each time. The temperature of the water might come down just a little bit, but nothing to shock it. And what wool doesn't like it doesn't like to be agitated. It's like us. We don't like to be agitated. Well, neither does wool. And so we don't want to agitate it. We don't want to put it in our dryer. We want to gently wash it. And then after it was washed, uh, there was process after process. But I want to read you one more are a part of another letter and it starts out Jack and Jill went up the hill 
to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got, and off did trot, as fast as he could caper, to old da Dame Dodd, who patched his knob with vinegar and brown paper. When I get out my wool dye pots, I feel a kindred spirit to old Dame Dodd. I haven't patched any knobs ever with vinegar and brown paper. However, I think she may have been a woman of many talents, and surely one who dyed her fine white wool in large bubbling cauldrons. I see her standing over her dye pot, throwing in strange mordants, dashes of roots, pinches of herbs, and a handful of blossoms for good measure into the boiling water. Stirring her kettle, she muttered peculiar and odd incantations over transforming fibers. The woolen stirring spoon was used to lift the wet wool that had turned dirty yellow out of the water. She watched the dingy yellow turn indigo blue as the dripping matted fleece oxidized in the air. Carefully she inspected this new color, then submerged it again for even a more intense shade of indigo. Again she stirred and mumbled, adding some sheep urine into the pot. Truth be known, it was no doubt Jack sent upon the unpleasant task of fetching the sheep urine in his pail. The urine gave the wool its lasting and most intense shade of the indigo. Dame Dodd, at the right moment, pulled the dull yellow wool out of the boiling water, draining it, then spreading it out on a wooden rack to oxidize to blue and then to dry in the bright sunshine. Fortunately, I have no messy mordants, strange roots, or bottled urine to add to my dye pot to come up with my vibrant shades of indigo. My fa fibers may not hold their shades and colors as well as those used in Dame Dodd's day, but they will last as long as I need them to. Still, I feel much like her as I stir my pot, adding vinegar and dye, stirring my, with my wooden spoon, inspecting the color of the desired shades. So, that is it. Next week, it's the very end of the spinning wheel tales and I'll tell you what happened to it and some more about it. So have a good Saturday. Thank you for coming and I'll see you again. And thank you to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you and all of you.